There was like 10 other videos about how to separate audio and OBS. You know the thumbnails where the dude is like pointing at the audio sliders and then maybe it says separate audio at the top. But I promise this video is gonna be way different. All these dudes are facing left and I'm facing right. Yeah, we are gonna talk about that plugin for OBS that you've probably already heard about, but I think this is a real game changer because this is my audio setup inside of OBS. I've got my game audio, my music, Discord, Chrome, basically all the audio for all my different programs separated out directly inside of OBS and not scrunched together as a single audio source like your audio might be. And you don't even need to buy anything. No expensive hardware, no confusing and overly complicated software, just a single OBS plugin. But here's the thing that most videos I feel are missing. Nobody wants their god tiered gameplay to be interrupted because you have to tab out of your game and then use your mouse to control all of your sliders in OBS you need some kind of physical interface to control all of your audio. So I'm gonna show you how you can use your stream deck to control all your OBS sliders. Don't have a stream deck? That's okay because you can also set up these touchscreen sliders right from your phone and turn your phone into an audio mixer for OBS. Now I know I said that you don't need expensive hardware, but do you guys not have phones? This video is sponsored by Nerd or Die. If you've been looking to upgrade the visuals for your stream, Nerd or Die has a ton of different designs for you to pick from. From panels to alerts to full-blown stream designs, everything you'll need and they're all super customizable and really easy to install. And they just came out with a brand new design that they said would be out by now, but it's not and I kind of need to get this video out. So uh, I'm just gonna post the blurred out pictures that they showed me, but it looks very cool. And even if you already have a stream design, they have all sorts of things like tools and widgets and icons for your stream deck that you might find useful. So if you wanna check them out, links are down below and use code nutty at checkout for 15% off. So the whole thing that makes all of this possible is a plugin for OBS that's been out for a while. It's called Wind Capture Audio. To boil it down into one simple explanation, the plugin adds a new option so that you can add separate audio sources for individual programs. Normally OBS smushes all your audio into a single audio source, but with Wind Capture Audio, I can add a separate audio source for Discord, a separate one for Chrome, a separate one for Spotify, a separate one for P-Hubs. But what this means is I have ultimate control over my audio. I can mute my music just for you guys, but still have it go to my headphones, or I can turn down my game audio, but still have it loud just for me. The plugin is super easy to install. Just go to the link down below and download the exe file and then run it to install it. It's probably worth mentioning at this point that it only works for Windows. So if you're a Mac user, I don't know how to help you. When you next relaunch OBS, there will be a new type of source called an audio application output that you can add to any one of your scenes. Then in this window down near the bottom, you can click in this drop down box and it's gonna show you all your different running applications, at least the ones that are outputting audio. In my case, I'll just select Google Chrome, then click the add button. And now you'll see a new audio source in your OBS mixer that contains just Chrome's audio. And this is really dope because if I play music inside of Music B, I'll still be able to hear it, but my viewers won't be able to at all. But as soon as I start playing Chrome's audio, they're only going to be able to hear what I'm playing inside of Chrome. And you can add as many of these audio outputs as you want. You could add a separate output for every single one of your programs, or you could add multiple programs to a single audio output. So you can put all of your games onto a single audio output and just call that game audio. Now, one neat thing that I would recommend is to add all your audio outputs to a dedicated scene. So that way you don't have to add like five different audio outputs to all your different scenes. You can just nest that one scene that contains all your different audio outputs. But now that your audio is separated out inside of OBS, you have a lot more freedom of how your audio is controlled. For example, you could have have a BRB screen that just has your music's audio and then your game scene that has just your game's audio. So when you switch back and forth between the two, you can only hear the audio sources that you've added just to that particular scene. Another advantage of separating your audio inside of OBS is if you go to your advanced audio properties, you can assign each of your audio sources 
to a separate track. So when you're recording a video, you can record your game audio into its own separate track, your music into its own separate track, so that when you go to edit your videos later, they're all separated out inside of your video editor. I'm telling you guys, this is my favorite way to separate audio inside of OBS. It's so good, it makes me dick hard. But there are a few big limitations that give devices like the Wave XLR and the Beacon Mix Create a sort of a big advantage. You can't adjust what you hear separately from what your stream hears. So if I was to turn down my game audio inside of the Windows Audio Mixer, it also turns down the audio inside of OBS. There's just no simple way to set up a separate headphone mix. But that didn't stop me from coming up with a really jank solution. You can mute your audio just for you, but not for your viewers by going into your Windows audio settings, scrolling down to the application that you want, and then changing the audio output to an output device that you're not using. In my case, I have this leftover virtual cable and I just send my audio to the virtual cable. So that way I can't hear it anymore, but the stream can still hear it. This is totally stupid, but is it really stupid if it works? Now, obviously you don't wanna mess around with your Windows audio settings while you're gaming because while you're gaming. You still need a physical interface for controlling your audio. So let's talk about the first solution using a stream deck. I have made a page on my stream deck that is entirely dedicated to controlling my audio. And it's set up so each column represents one channel. So I got my browser, Discord, game audio, and music. So we'll walk through each of the four buttons that make up each channel. The top two buttons are used just for volume control. So I can raise or lower the volume just for that specific channel. And the way I did that is by installing a plugin for the stream deck called OBS Tools, which essentially gives the ability to adjust the volume of audio sources directly inside of OBS. So I just added two source volume adjust buttons and made one for raising the volume and then one for lowering the volume. And then the next two buttons are just mute buttons. The first mute button mutes the audio going out to my audience and then the second mute button mutes what's going out to my speakers. That first mute button is just the regular mixer audio action that comes on everybody's stream deck. That, that just mutes the channel inside of OBS and therefore muting it for my audience. But that second mute button, this is where I use that super jank solution. But what I did was I installed a Stream Deck plugin called Wind Tools, and that adds a new option called Change Audio Output. So I added a multi-action switch and I used that Change Audio Output to flip my audio between my speakers and that virtual audio cable. And that way I can have a mute button that will mute just for what I hear, but not for what you guys hear. Like I said, super dumb, but it works really well. But yeah, that's about it. You just rinse and repeat for all your different audio outputs and then maybe add some custom icons if you want and you've turned your stream deck into a makeshift mixer for OBS. Buttons are nice and all, but I really wish that the stream deck had sliders or knobs or faders or, or some kind of analog control built into it but you gotta think that Elgato is probably working in that as we speak. But in the meantime, you can actually add touch sliders to your phone using an app called Touch Portal. It's been a while since we talked about Touch Portal, but it essentially turns your phone into a stream deck, except for nerds that have too much time on their hands. One of their recent-ish updates was they added the ability to add sliders. So when you're adding a button inside of Touch Portal, you can turn that button into a slider. Down on the left, you can add a set source volume action, and then you just select in the drop-down box the audio source that you want to control with the slider. Then on the right-hand side, you can change all the properties for your slider. So you can make it a horizontal or a vertical slider. You can add a label so you know what the slider does. And then on the last tab, you can change the size of the slider as it would appear on your phone. Then you launch Touch Portal on your phone and just use your finger to move the slider up and down and that will directly control the corresponding slider inside of OBS all in real time. Now that you know how to make one slider, you just rinse and repeat for all your different audio outputs inside of OBS, maybe add a custom icon under each slider and change the color of each slider. And you got yourself a tiny little mixer all in your phone that can control all your OBS audio wirelessly for not that much money. I probably should have mentioned that this app costs money at the beginning, but um, 
Look how pretty it looks. Anyway, you all owe me subs now. Isn't that, I think that's how uh, YouTube works. Also, I stream on Twitch. I stream three nights a week. And um, how do I manipulate you guys to do what I want you guys to do? Just follow me on Twitch. And um, yeah, if you need help setting all this stuff up, you can join the Discord. Links are down below. But uh, I will see you guys in next week's video, assuming that you want to come back. See you then.